This year when we began to look at the one-to-one -one program and our teachers, our staff development, and the pedagogy, Parks and I decided that one of the best things that we could do would be to start the process back at the beginning with our teachers and with the school as a whole. We realized that the first thing we really needed to do was to find what is the pedagogy of the school as a whole, what is the vision, what are our goals, what are the methodologies that we're going to use when we're teaching our students and when we're teaching the teachers. As a whole, we are going to focus on trying to make not only the student's education individualized, but we want to make the teacher's education individualized. We realize that each teacher is at a different point in the process. Um, many of our established teachers are perfect. They know exactly how they need to teach to get their points across, but then you have teachers who are new to the process. And so what we wanted to do was take everybody back to the beginning and begin with those basic essential questions. Who are you as a teacher? How are you gonna teach? What is the end result? It's no longer has to be a multiple choice test and there's nothing wrong with that, but it doesn't have to be limited to that. You can ask your students to do and create much more, collaborate and share. Um, we wanted to ask our teachers, how do we present the information to our students? Do I have to stand in lecture? Do I have to let them do the research on their own? Do they listen to a podcast? Those were all questions that we knew our teachers needed to ask. So our definition for professional development for the next couple of years has been that we want to take this teachers from the beginning of the process and redefine who they are as a teacher and share that not only with us, with administration and with the students so that when a new kid comes into our school, they will be able to see what their teachers are like, how they're gonna teach and what they're looking for in the class. Their products have been extremely creative. They've had lots of fun. We have started the process and one of the things that we wanna show you is the first step we began with was to ask the teacher to evaluate themselves, determine what teacher they are, what their focus is, how do they plan a unit, how do they, how do they get ready to teach the students? Is there a scope and sequence? Is there a, you know, is there something that they need to get across to the students before they begin the unit and express that to us? And the following video clips show you some of the things we have learned about our teachers. Pedagogy has to do with the way that we teach, uh, the content that we decide to teach and how we teach it, what we ask the students to do with the content as well. When I'm planning a unit, I try to include projects and assignments that will be beneficial to their future, not just in college, but also in the workplace. And when I evaluate my students' work, I think, would this be acceptable to a college professor or to a future employer? One of the novels that I teach in English 11 is The Great Gatsby. This year I decided to do a project-based assessment instead of a typical objective standard test. So what I did was I assigned the students to imagine themselves as an editor for a 1920s newspaper. And um, so what they did was they took their, their Macs and on the Mac they, in their pages template there's a newsletter template. And they had several to choose from. One of them looks aged and some of them are more fun and I didn't give any parameters there. But they had to have five different features for the newspaper. Um, a news event, a who, what, why, when, where, a breaking news from the 20s. They had to write an editorial for another feature. They had to do a, a feature story, entertainment or opening club or something like that. They had to write a sports um, article and then they had to write a classified ad. And um, they have spent all week researching the 20s, what crimes would have happened, what, what about the fashion, what, what about the entertainment, what about artists, what about musicians, um, what sports were famous in the 20s, what were people doing with their free time. And in coming up with that project, they have blended the characters from The Great Gatsby kind of imaginatively into the true history of the 1920s in a way that's both creative and historically informed. And I haven't seen the finished projects yet, but I cannot wait. They've really poured themselves into it. And I think it gives the kids a chance to really show me what they know, a chance to be creative, and they will probably learn more about the 20s than I could ever have taught them on my own. I've always felt it's, it's important for the student to learn why the answer is what it is, not just the answer. Um, many students use uh, sort of a memorization then dump method 
uh, where they'll memorize a list of facts and then forget it two days after the test is over. And that's, that's not really the goal of when I teach. I try to teach them uh, to learn the material on a whole and to keep that material more than just a memorization of a list of facts. Uh, it has been different. Uh, I was used to teaching basically from a whiteboard. Uh, the students wrote down everything that I wrote down and it has been a, a change for me but a pleasant change in the sense that uh, I feel that I'm able to move faster with the sense that the students now have access to the information um, that I have access to for the most part. Uh, I'm allowed more now to uh, allow them to do more study on their own uh, which has, has made my job not only easier but a lot more uh, fun because I can now go more in depth with the topics that we're discussing. I can now uh, expound on the information that we're teaching and not just teach to the textbook. Typically, being a Bible teacher, I, I, I'm bound to develop their, their unit off a particular text. And in doing so, uh, we ask three central questions. What's the text say? Uh, what did the text mean to the original listener? And what does the text mean today? I'm looking at uh, some collaborative efforts in developing applications and metaphors to today's learner based off whatever text we're studying at the time. And I'm encouraging them to develop a technologically fashioned product based off whatever application they come away with from our particular text of study. Uh, one thing I also love about the one-to-one -one ratio is uh, the freedom it gives me to do complete computer-based testing that um, challenges the students to reflect on what they've learned, but also teaches them in the process of testing in that they get uh, automatic responses back from, from their tests. They get, uh, they get the opportunity to engage different levels of the material within their testing. And so even the tests become learning modules in and of themselves. Um, I also like the, the one to one ratio because uh, it allows us a creative, a creative tool when it comes to classroom assignments uh, to, to do collaborative uh, exercises together um, and to really explore the entirety of biblical knowledge based on uh, what's out there on the internet. So uh, it's been a blessing to, uh, to our, our field of study. All right, so once I have my goals set, I look at um, what I think my students need to memorize and read, what their basic skills, their mathematical skills they need to leave the classes with, because both classes I teach are heavily involved in math. I look at any models, demonstrations I can use, any labs, hands-on activities that they can do. How can I incorporate technology into the curriculum? And then how can I engage the students in the learning process?